So now that we have our layout grid, I'm just going to hit the line tool and just start drawing a bunch of lines. And I'm trying to make these perpendicular so you'll see that uh, once we lay it down, these do have a perpendicular relationship or in this or in this case it has a midpoint relationship. So we'll just keep going and then draw these horizontal ones. All right, so we have the layout for our basic puzzle. Now, just a note, you really could add as many or as few lines as you'd like for your layout. We're going to keep this fairly simple and make a puzzle that has only 14 pieces, but you could obviously raise the number of divisions that you have for your grid, and that would give you more puzzle pieces and make this puzzle a little more difficult to accomplish. All right, so we've got our layout grid, but that's not necessarily what the state of Utah looks like. So I have this trim tool. If I just hit the T on the keyboard, you can see that changes to the trim tool or under our sketch drop down, we have the trim tool right here. I'm just going to go ahead and select all of these lines here to cut out that little notch for the state of Utah. Bingo. So I'm not worried about defining any of the dimensions of these specific lines because they're based on these points, which are evenly spaced. So we know that that's good to go. And the fact that we're just creating a traditional puzzle here with straight lines and circular cutouts really makes this design straightforward. But again, you can make this as complex and just plain ridiculous as you want. It's up to you. We're just keeping it simple for the purpose of this video. All right, so we've got our layout, but this doesn't look like a puzzle at this point. This would be pretty easy if we had pieces that were just rectangles to just put into spots in any old way and hope that it comes out. So we need to make this an actual puzzle and create some variation so these pieces will basically be one of a kind. So for this, I'm just gonna grab the three-point arc tool, and that's right here under arc. It's our first option, three-point arc. And on the interior, this isn't gonna work on the outside of this part here, but on the interior, I'm just gonna start drawing some arcs. And the three-point arc requires you to click twice, and then you can drag it out in any direction. I'm just gonna drag it out so I don't wanna snap it to any of these grid points quite yet. But now I want to dimension this single one, and then I can use it as a reference for every single arc after that. D for the dimension key, grab that arc, and I just want a radius of 0.5. Let's keep it simple. And then I also have to dimension these two points here. I also want 0.5 as well. And I'm going to trim up the sketch at the end, but I do want to just show you one trim here. I'm just going to trim out this section, and that's basically what our puzzle piece is going to look like. If we just isolate this one, you can see that that contour looks pretty much like a puzzle piece. So as you can see, this is pretty movable at this point. You might want to just lay down one more dimension from here to here. Let's make that 1.25. And then that'll lock that down. I'll exit out of the dimension key. And if I try to pull that, I can't. That's fully defined, good enough for me. And then I have the beginnings of two puzzle pieces just by creating that one arc that goes out into this one. But at this point, it's up to you to basically decide which puzzle pieces do you want to have the arcs protruding and which do you want to have them cut out of. So I'm just going to go through here randomly and lay these down. I'm going to speed up the video as this is a bit tedious. So once I have everything the way I want it, we'll take a look at it. All right, let's start with that. So now we need to do a lot of cleaning up. So I know that I want all of these circles to be the same as this 0.5 radius here. So I could just go ahead and hit the D key and dimension all of these to 0.5. But I like making sure that they're equal using the equal relationship over here on the sketch palette. I'm just going to grab this equal relationship and then I'm going to start grabbing. So we've got an equal relationship between this first one and this one. And I'm just going to continue to use this one as a reference. You can see the equal tool remains open after we lay down that relationship. So I'm just going to keep selecting this one and then select each individual circle. And it's a good idea to do this as methodically as possible. I'm going basically top to bottom and left to right. And now I need to dimension the distance between each point on this arc. So for this, I'm just gonna grab the dimension tool. This is a little easier just to grab these two points and punch in 0.5.
Okay, so it looks like I've got all of those arcs dimensioned properly. Now at this point, it's up to you if you wanna leave these kind of off kilter. I just laid these down and didn't really put much thought into how they're lined up. I like a little more uniformity, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab our horizontal vertical tool and just start cleaning some of this up. Like these, I want to be horizontal. Looks a little bit better. I want this and this to be vertical. Maybe these two. Let's make these vertical. I think I can line these up a little better. I'm not going to go too crazy here. Let's make these vertical. And then I'm going to add one dimension here. Let's just make that 0.8 even. Again, there's a whole lot of geometry that is undefined. If I just pull on these, you can see that these really go in, in a lot of different ways. So maybe I can add one more here. Make those horizontal. Okay, I don't want to get too crazy, like I said. Now that I have my arcs referencing this dimension here with the cutout of 0.5, now I can just grab my T tool, which is trim, and just trim up all of this business in here. Just grab all of these lines in between those two points. Just trim it out. All right, let's take a look. Make sure I didn't miss any. Okay, so that's looking good. The one thing about the sketch is it does have a lot of information as far as all of these tiny little dimensions and relationships. So I'm going to stop the sketch to take a look and, and get a better idea of what we're dealing with. I want to make sure that there's no open contours. So we have closed contours for every single piece. Looks like that's good. You can just hover over each to see that it does have a closed contour of each puzzle piece. And if you want to go ahead and clean up some of this, this is now the time. You just go ahead and edit that sketch and you can say, maybe I want this one to be horizontal with this one as well. Stop the sketch. Looks a little bit better on that one specific piece. So cool, we've got a basic sketch of Utah cut into a grid with tr very traditional puzzle pieces sketched into that grid.